cerebral palsy. It seems somewhat of a mouthful, but I'd like to tell you about it a bit more as we proceed. But before we do that, as we gather for this meeting, physically distant and virtually constrained, let us take a moment to reflect the meaning of place and doing so recognize the various traditional lands on which we do our business today. We acknowledge the elders, past, present and emerging, of all the land we work and live on and their ancestral spirits with gratitude and respect. So this podcast consists of two talks. Uh, the first is my introduction to CP Achieve and the second is participating in health economics and resource use research, families' experiences and preferences. So why was CP Achieve needed? Well, some of you probably know that children with cerebral palsy often receive comprehensive pediatric care. Those at transition sometimes receive limited health uh, care, depends a bit on where they live and uh, which part of the city or which part of the state or states. They may have a successful transition program for a year or two, but they're often discharged then in their early 20s to a relative vacuum of adult services where there's little evidence for best practice. So from some work done 10 years ago, we did a survey of 20 to 30 year olds and we had a lot of young people respond. We had a response rate of about 350 young people and from that study 10 years ago, we found that young adults with cere cerebral palsy often had low levels of education and employment. Many of this age group were still living at home in contrast to their peers. Many had not accessed health services. We felt that we needed to do much, much more. And hence we wrote an application to the NH and MRC to try and improve the situation and get a grant. So our vision for people with cerebral palsy in Australia is in Australia where people with cerebral palsy receive excellent health care throughout their lives, not just when they're children, and live in and contribute to supportive communities to enable their participation. There's two overarching aims for CP Achieve. The first is to improve physical and mental health for children and young adults aged 10 to 30 years. And our second aim is to build supportive family, community and health service environments. Underpinning our work are four very important principles. And the first and probably the most important of all is consumer engagement. With this work, it's really vital that we have consumer engagement. We've already uh, appointed a consumer coordinator. This is Joan Gaines and a project assistant, Sevastine Katsakis. But we need to involve vast numbers of consumers to make this a really worthwhile project. Health economics is very important and I'm glad that we have Sophie and Kate speaking to us later today. Participation will be a major aim of this CP Achieve. And also the workforce in this area has been very, very small. Very few people, allied health professionals med or medical professionals have worked to spe spe specially uh, know and treat people with cerebral palsy that are young adults. And we hope to develop a specialist workforce so that when CP Achieve is over, the workforce remains. So we do have investigators from many universities and we're very grateful about this and I'll list them at the end. And we also have collaborators from Canada and Sweden. But most important, and I've just said this before, will be our consumer investigators. We need you consumers that are listening to help plan projects, to help implement projects, to participate in projects, 
and to help us disseminate the results. That will make CP achieve very successful indeed. So what actually are we going to do? Well, we've decided that we'd have two programs. The first is to improve physical and mental health. We know that pain and insomnia and fatigue and mental health problems are very common in this group of young people. But we want to document this further, along with the level of mobility, function and independence, and health and NDIS service use. We want to get a picture of what the life and health of these young people is like now in 2020 and moving onwards over the next few years. We want to establish cohorts of young people to determine if there has been an improvement in education, employment and participation in community life. And we also want to know now if young people are managing to find some health services and using appropriate NDIS services. But we also want to implement new programs. So it's not just about fact finding. I was very conscious when I was writing at this that we really needed to implement something new and something that was useful. And some of you may be aware of the wonderful Fit Skills program that's been running for a few years now, headed up by Dr. Nora Shields at La Trobe University. And it's been uh, people with cerebral palsy in the gross motor function classification system levels have one, two, and three have been involved in this as have other young people with conditions such as Down syndrome. It's a wonderful program whereby an allied health professional um, is paired up, uh, stu a student is paired up with a person with a disability and they both exercise together at a local gym. I'm sure the allied health professional student gets actually more out of it than the person with a disability, but I believe that both certainly benefit. And now we want to uh, trial and implement this program for those with more severe motor impairment, those that are wheelchair users. And also we want to employ, implement a healthy lifestyle program. This comes all the way from the Netherlands and we want to adapt it for the Australian con context. And the goals of this program is to enhance fitness and physical ability to help young adults minimize secondary impairments and to teach self-management of healthcare. So the second program is understanding, is building supportive environments around the family, the community, and in health services. To do this, we need to understand current health service environments and the needs of young people with cerebral palsy and their families. We need to evaluate current transition programs and we need to implement programs to educate and empower youth to navigate health, community and national disability insurance services. So we've got two projects in mind to help with this work, to implement some of this work. This is the first one's called Project Team. It uh, comes actually from Boston University, from North America. We know that teens and young adults with disabilities want to need to do lots of activities, but sometimes factors in the environment make this difficult. So project team teaches a game plan about how to make plans, how to identify and resolve physical and social barriers to participation. And we hope this will be successfully implemented here in Australia. And the second one that we hope to uh, implement is a program called PREP, Pathways and Resources for Engagement and Participation. This one comes from Canada and it aims to increase youth with reduced mobility to participate in leisure and recreational pursuits. And it's five pronged. Goals are identified, plans are made, it's made to happen. And of course, most importantly, the outcomes are measured and the skills gained by those young people are used to address new goals and to inspire others 
and to perhaps be mentors for others. So this is a wonderful program that we've heard a lot about from, from Canada and we hope it can be implemented and be very successful here in Australia. So this, there's this to be done and perhaps many more projects that I've not been able to discuss today. How will we get it all done? Well, it'll be hard, but with all of your help, it'll be definitely possible. We do have some funding from the NHMRC grant. It's not actually very much, but it will enable us to fund some PhD students and a few part-time postdoctoral positions, which will help us to get some work done. And we also hope to fund consumers as partners and co-researchers. But we also want to involve all those working in the field and particularly family doctors who are often the first line for these young people, rehabilitation physicians, allied health therapists, psychiatrists and psychologists. We we're actually only able to nominate 20 people and that was a lot when we put the application into NH and MRC. But we know there's a lot of people interested in research in this area. And we hope to bring them on and into the CP of Chief family as research associates. And we've already started to do this with about uh, half a dozen already appointed. So we have a long team of investigators. Uh, I'm not going to read out all their names, but you can see they come from Melbourne. They come from New South Wales, from Queensland. And we have a PhD student that we've just uh, given a scholarship to from Western Australia. So all parts of the country hopefully will be involved. And very importantly, we've appointed our CRE coordinator, Kari Klein, who's managed to put this um, session together today. So well done and thank you to her. So moving forward, I hope you've got the impression that this is all about a team, a huge team with the investigators, but with, mostly with the consumers, trying to improve outcomes for these young fat people and of course their families, funded by the National Health and Medical Research Council. There will be some time for questions at the end, but if you'd like to inquire about any of the information today, there's an email address there. And we're very excited that the website will be launched soon and you can find the address there of the new website. So thank you very much, everyone. And while this is virtual, um, it's great that so many have been able to participate and we really look forward to involving you as CP Achieve moves forwards as a team. So I'm going to hand over now to Dr. Sophie Shi and Dr. Kate Anderson. Sophie is a health economist with experience in designing and implementing trial-based economic evaluations. And Dr. Kate Anderson is a speech pathologist who's worked with families of children with disability in both a clinician and a researcher capacity. So I'll now hand over to, to Sophie and Kate. 